Hi again. Welcome back. I'm Rod Miller, and this is Astro Adventure Weekly. A backyard observatory is the dream of many amateur astronomers. To have your equipment set up and ready to go at a moment's notice, a backyard observatory could mean an extra hours observing after dinner, or it could even mean a couple of extra hours of observing on the weekend, saving you hours of setup and teardown time, less prep and more observing or imaging. Now, most amateurs think that an observatory is just way beyond their financial reach. But like more and more astronomy-related hobby items, the price is falling and the number of choices just keeps increasing. A few years ago, there were only a couple of choices or a couple of options for advanced amateur domes. But in the last couple of years, we've seen more options for roll-off roof observatories and newer, cheaper domes that are made of HDPE, or polyethylene plastic. These new, these new domes are UV and weather resistant, inexpensive, and almost indestructible. The two newest are the Explorer Dome and the Skyshed Pod. Both provide a complete manual backyard observatory for not much over $1,000. That's much less than many telescopes cost. Between these options and the classic roll-off observatory, almost anyone should be able to not only afford a backyard observatory, but they should be able to get it by the, uh, the local homeowners association or planning commission, possibly even the wife. This week I thought we'd take a look at some of my adventures in observatory building. My first attempt was a completely home constructed plywood dome with a fiberglass reinforced plastic coating. It's a product called Glass Steel from Home Depot. And it's, uh, this was a real learning experience for me. First of all, I'd never built anything even remotely like this or this complex. My construction skills fall somewhere between smashed thumbs and missing digits. I did actually complete the project with all eight fingers and two thumbs uh, firmly attached, if maybe a little bit sore. The post-mortem on this one. Well, the observatory dome was heavy. I mean, really heavy. Hard to push on the Home Depot cheapo casters and difficult to motorize because of the size and the weight. So, my next attempt was with the Explorer Dome plastic dome. Initially, I tried to fit the Explorer Dome to the base of the old dome with an adapter ring that I made. But the old base was seven foot six inches outside and the new dome was eight foot outside. There was a little bit too much overhang and it still didn't turn quite as well as it should have. The next upgrade involved building an 8 by 8 by 4 foot box with an octagon on top and custom cutting the corner panels. Again, I made these out of glass steel. This has worked well for the last year or so. It gives me a lot more room inside for hardware and motorization, but I still really like the look of the classic round base. So the question becomes, what do I do next? I have two Explorer domes and one base. There's several good sets of plans on the net that I could modify to make a, a really whiz-bang observatory dome, but uh, the square footage would exceed the 100 square foot limit set by our local uh, building codes for portable sheds and buildings. So we get into permits, inspections, and approval processes, and I really don't want to go down that road. So a second dome on a round base, motorized with remote control from my warm room, also known as my lazy boy in the living room, then maybe next summer change the other observatory to a round base and remote access and control. One observatory should be set up for wide field imaging and the other for longer focal length work. Now, last week I mentioned the Velman 8055 controller and the Les V dome driver. This is uh, my dome controller and uh, motor controller relays mounted and ready for installation in the observatory. The 8055 is an inexpensive USB interface for controlling just about anything, motors, relays, sensors, etc. And there are a few other goodies that have been introduced by Explorer Dome, including a complete motorization system that will work just fine with this controller, and a new mounting ring. 
The Skyshed Pod is also shipping now, and it looks like a pretty good system. With about half of the sky exposed at any given time, it looks as though motorization would probably not be needed, but it also looks like accessing Zenith might be a little bit of a problem. Imaging with the Digital Rebel. There are a lot of people imaging with the digital SLR, with digital LS, SLR cameras these days. Uh, the prices on DSLRs have dropped significantly in the last couple of years, bringing these cameras in, down to the reach of more and more people all the time. Since these cameras use standard lenses and T-mounts, it's natural that people would try using them for, for astrophotography. Now, I've had pretty good success and a lot of fun using the, uh, the Digital Rebel for astrophotography. There are some things you need to know if you, want, uh, if you really want to use this camera for imaging. The first thing is focusing. It's a real pain. It's almost impossible to focus via the viewfinder that's built into the back of this. It's extremely difficult with a right angle viewfinder that attaches to the back. And downloading images to the PC, reviewing and focus and try again, it just doesn't work. The best focus method I found for the Rebel is the, uh, the stiletto made by Stellar Technologies. I don't want to sound like an evangelist or anything, but this thing just works. You hook it up to the scope, focus until the little lines disappear, swap it out for the camera and you start shooting. I haven't found any better way to focus. I've tried just about every method, including computer control. For speed and ease of setup, this puppy is just, it's it for me. When doing manual imaging with the Rebel, the unit is set up for a, this unit set up for a Canon EOS, but uh, adapters are made on the front here for just about any popular CCD camera. And if you have an automated imaging system, computer focus control is great, but it's a little cumbersome with the Rebel. Um, the next neat toy for the Rebel is a serial or parallel cable. Uh, um, cable release. This will let you control the shutter for long exposure using a, a computer. You can use a USB to download the images. It uh, basically helps you automate imaging runs. It can also be used for wide field time lapse imaging. And there are several vendors on the, on the net. You can find these for around $37 or so. I also have a manual cable release that I use. I paid about $10 for this on eBay, and it's great if you don't want to have to deal with a computer or you're at a star party or whatever. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. Thanks for watching.